Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing great. In today's video, we are gonna be talking about another brand new move that was introduced in the trailers of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And that move in particular is gonna be called Shed Tail. We did get a glimpse of it on Size Lazar in one of the trailers recently where it utilized this move and showed off how it works. Now pretty much if you don't realize how this works is Size Lazar uses Shed Tail, loses an amount of its HP in return for a substitute at the same time it then pivots out and you can then bring in another Pokemon to take its place so the best way to look at it is it's like using a combination of substitute and baton pass at the same time as the same move and that is what basically shed tail does now we have to elaborate in this video a little bit because we don't know all the information about this move up to this point we know how it operates but we don't know the pool of Pokemon that are gonna have access to this move. Now I feel like this really will hinge whether or not this move is super impactful in the format or if it's not so impactful in the format. If we see a lot of Pokemon with access to this move, I feel like this move will become very dominant in the format. It is such a valuable tool to be able to switch your Pokemon in for free essentially behind a substitute or maybe just taking substitute damage and coming in fresh to reposition yourself in a battle. But like I just mentioned, if you have a bad board position, what you can do is use Shed Tail to your advantage. Now you're gonna go first, potentially with your Shed Tail user, and then pivot out to something in the back, hopefully repositioning to something that can resist an incoming attack from your opponent. And if that is the case, they're probably more than likely not gonna be able to break the substitute in that cycle, meaning the new Pokemon that you get onto the field is gonna have a substitute already set up in front of it, giving you essentially a free turn the next play around of moves. So that's huge. If your Pokemon has got a free turn, it means they can set up with a Sword Stance, a Dragon Dance, or an other uh, stat boosting move Move, which could then really turn the tide for you in the Pokemon battle itself. It also means that you aren't losing resources unnecessarily or you're taking damage by kind of repositioning and getting punished for repositioning. Now this is where I think it comes into a lot of context because it does depend on how many Pokemon are able to learn this move. If there's only a small pool of Pokemon or if Sazlazar is the only Pokemon because it's a signature attack, we're probably not going to see it used that often and players are going to be able to kind of tell when that Pokemon will be using that move to reposition and then you can adjust your play slightly but if there is a huge pool of Pokemon that are able to learn this it does mean that it gets a bit more complex and a bit more overpowering for team building in general but if this move is widely available like through a TM to the majority of Pokemon we are gonna see this played a lot, especially in the video game championship format, just because of the ability to pivot out. Pivoting out and repositioning yourself is a huge tool anyway. We've seen things like U-turn, Volt Switch, Parting Shot on Incineroar in particular, be so useful tools where they're able to reposition their boards and then put themselves in a better position to go forward and try and win the match. Now, if you're combining this with Substitute, which is already a super powerful attack in itself, it gives you a free turn essentially if you get the substitute up or it stops an onset of damage for a little period of time while that substitute is active it does give you room in matches and now we're going into a format where potentially dynamax isn't a thing and substitutes are a little bit more reliable this is a huge move if it is a small pool of pokemon i don't see it being that much of a problem but if it is available like i say as a tm and everything can learn it then this will be a bit of an issue you've got to think most things can learn the substitute tm or i believe every Everything can so if we're going down the same path with shed tail then it will be a bit of an issue and if this does happen I could see moves like roll like whirlwind becoming a bit more viable on teams to get rounded because although you are switching out with the substitute and getting that new Pokemon on the field as soon as that Pokemon hits the field with that substitute that was gifted from the shed tail it is going to be susceptible to roll which is a lower priority attack it's always going to go last and it's always going to be able to remove that Pokemon out off the field and get rid of that substitute as well and make it a little bit more disrupting for your opponent other options are the ability infiltrator as well that 
tackles, bypasses things like Substitute and can attack straight through Substitutes onto the Pokemon that's incoming so you can still punish opponents that way. So they are a few options. Obviously sound based moves get around substitutes as well. You've got things like Hyper Voice, things like Snarl that can punish your opponent. So there are ways to get around substitute and Shed Tail but it will still be a very impactful move. Right now it's a really interesting topic to look at because we don't have all the information but like I've mentioned in other videos it's good to start looking at these new tools that we'll have available to us going into these new formats and kind of getting an idea or thinking about ideas with how they'll work and potentially how impactful they'll be in the new format. And like I said, these are my thoughts on this brand new move, but I'd love to hear your opinions on this too. So let me know, drop down there in the comment section and get typing away. Let me know what you think of Shed Tail, how impactful it will be in the upcoming format as well. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this video right here, which is all about my five top terror types in the new Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games. Definitely don't want to miss that one. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, take care, and bye-bye.